Well, a lot has changed since the last one of these videos we put out. And so, we're back. And in this series, we're going to go through everything you need to know to be successful on DAISY official service in 2023. But make no mistake, this isn't as simple as it sounds. And you're going to face a lot of challenges along your journey. We will cover both official maps, Livonia and Chinaris. We'll deal with loot routes, old versus the new, and the most profitable. We'll deal with heli sites and the loot you can expect to find there now, including dynamic events such as the military train spawns, as well as the M79 and explosive rounds. We'll then move on to the static toxic zones over in Pavlovo and of course Riffy. We'll take a little look at what you can expect to find there and how much of each item. And once we've completed all of that, we'll go take a look at everyone's favorite, base building, and of course, base raiding, including stashes. So come join us for the ride. And don't forget, if you like the videos, please don't forget to subscribe. It really helps the channel out. In this first episode, we're going to be dealing with hints, tips, myths. We'll also go on an old school loot run to see if it's still as profitable as it used to be. On future episodes, I'll also take you on the most optimized new loot routes. In this video, we will be solely working on the Chinaris map. Everything is as fresh as the latest 121 update. We'll be taking a look at heli sites, toxic zones, and dynamic events such as the military train spawns. But before we hit all of that, there's a couple of things we just need to get straight from the outset of these videos. Number one, my HUD will always be on throughout these episodes. You need to see exactly what my state of the character is at all times. Number two, I will always place the name and number of the official server that this has been filmed on in the description link. Number three, everything you're about to see has been filmed on a live official PC server. The only exception to that will be any cinematics such as the intros. Now as you can see, the character we're using here has just spawned in on the beach west of Cherno and we're heading west in order to try and find some basic food and water supplies to get us up and running. Now we have just seen a base but we're going to ignore that for the time being. As I said before this is live so anything can happen at any time. If we get into it with any other players then you are going to see that. So let's get into it. Now the basic principles of the game of DayZ have pretty much always stayed the same. You need to make sure your food and water are optimised at all times. It does still remain the case that the only thing completely out of your control will be any hackers or cheaters, which unfortunately do still exist on official servers. So, the loot route we're actually taking, the old school one, is spawn on the coast, head to Slemengorst, from there to VMC, from there to Northwest Airfield, and ending up at Tizzy. This is the oldest of routes going, but you may well be surprised as what we actually end up with after this loot run. As we do so, I'm gonna go through live all of the tips and tricks that I use to get me through these areas as safely as possible. So right now, we've made it to Zelenengorst. All of the gates and doors appear to be shut. We've just found an SK on the floor there. We're running with a shotgun with about 10 shells. That's all we have. Now the first big tip here is always check the roofs to your left of the brick building and always check the highest point of the fire station. Typical place for sniping. There's an easy way of dealing with a cluster of zombies that you're about to see. Those shower rooms are perfect areas for people to be hiding behind the doors or in the cubicles. So always double check them. And what you're seeing at the moment 
is that I'm not actually running with a gun in my hand. The reason I'm not is simply because there are a load of Zeds waiting to come and get me. And I'm going to take these out as quickly as possible, as silently as possible, and leave them in here if I can. Hence, making it look like I've not come through here. So we always shut the door, wait for them to congregate, and then open and close the door so I can deal with these nice and quietly. There's a perfect victim there. Just remember, the Zeds these days can hit you when they're facing the opposite way. And if you're standing on a table and chair like I have just been, I'm picking that up by the way, so that I can use that to throw and attract their interest. But if you're standing on the table like I am right now, they can actually power hit you from below. So just make sure you cover yourself. And at the moment, that little trick hasn't worked, so we're going to go for it again. So that's him sitting his ass down. Now, as you can see, at the moment, infected are congregating in large, large groups. But this dude here is going to give us our first plate carrier. Now, as you can see, we have taken a little bit of a beating and we're bleeding right now. This isn't ideal as we're in our first southern military area. And there's a high, high chance that someone will be about if they're not already. But we'll get what we come for. There's the plate carrier. And now it's a case of just trapping as many of these in as we possibly can. So there's three. Come on. And off we go. Okay, we're going to fast forward now to some of the gear we found in Zelenogorst. Okay, an FX-45. Some 762-39. We can now fill up the CR. I always like to take a look from the top of the prison building all the way across the train track here at Zelenogorst. You can generally tell if anyone's about or running around trying to loot the trains. Okay, dead zombie. That definitely wasn't us. So, we're going to pick up and take the worn SK. Much better condition than the other one. And fill it with nine rounds. Now we're in the game. So, we've got a full kit set now. And we have an assault helmet. Just bear in mind the noises from the 121 update when you block. And as you can see, even though you block sometimes, they are still getting through and cutting you. So we're at the trains now. And it's quite clear that whoever's been here has dropped a load of guns. And as you can now see, they've also armed a claymore. So we ain't going anywhere near that. They're probably nearby, waiting for us. There's an explosive rounds, and on that note, we are out as Leningorst. So from here, we've headed north to the nearby town of Sosnovka, where we're going to fill ourselves up at the well. Now it's important to note here, this is our second water stop on this route so far. So we popped into a nearby house, where we're just going to cook up all that wolf meat and hen meat we currently got. And this is all under the cover of darkness in a small, uninhabited, most of the time, town. So it gives us every opportunity to stay protected, hopefully. But just in case, we are weapons ready. Next up, we're at VMC. And just remember, hill behind, perfect for snipers. Secondly, even though it's the smallest military on the map, you're going to find most of your interactions here. Well, we've made it, and we're on the hill up at VMC. This is the current loadout. Got a little bit extra food now. And what I'm concerned about is looking left and right here, double checking that nobody is in the top window of the prison, and also that we haven't got any little surprises waiting for us. You can expect to find landmines placed in any of these buildings. 
Also, you've got to think about if you do annoy the infected here, they are likely to swarm all around you. And that is no pretty sight. Easy identification for any player to know that you are in here. It just looks like it's all been hit. What we got here? Oh, we'll take the uh, 556 rounds out of the clip. I should say mag. So we're going to quickly, efficiently conduct a search of the entire compound. Now we're always going to make sure that we cover our tracks as much as possible. So that means closing doors behind us. Is that a USG? Yeah, okay. We don't need uh, a little pea shooter for the time being. Not when we're running with what we have, CR57 and an SK at the moment. Now we will find a lot of ammo in smaller doses here. That's nice, we've got a suppressor, pistol suppressor that'll do. That would also fit the Bison and the USG, should you wish to use those. And we're going to do our normal little uh, trick here. Hopefully trap... One of these Zeds inside the L shape. Get a little bit of food in us before we move out. Okay, that dude hasn't come in, so we're going to try and sneak by. We're probably going to set that one off as well. Luckily, we got by him quite nicely. Okay, dangerous part now. Top of the stairs. Typical place for any kind of camper. It's normally going to be at the Far back end of the stairs, lying down. So we're going to... Is that bacon? Take some more food here. Brilliant. Always, always check this area here. And don't spend too much time in that room because you're likely to get sniped from the hill. Looks like we're going to end up locking a few of these Zeds in here then. So there's two. Now it can get a little bit sticky around here. You do get stuck on doors. There you go, right there, look. We're going to take a slap here, and we cut, and we're stuck again, look. Just be careful of that. Okay, we're all good. And that dude's still there, yeah. A hit from nowhere, didn't even see him. Anyway, move on. Zeds are crazy on here at the moment, at the 121 update. They just appear out of nowhere. Craziness. So, so far, what you'll start to see is we've hit two militaries and we're picking up little tiny bits along the route. By the time we finished up at Tizzy, we should be fully kitted. Right, let's invite our new friend in. There he is. So there's another one dealt with. Got one in the courtyard. Always make sure on those uh, entrances that you're not walking into a landmine or a tripwire with a grenade. It's the first thing I check. Just prior to going into any building, especially military now. Okay. 76239, we'll take a few of those. Come on, old son, in you come. There we go. There's one. Nothing scares you more when you suddenly open a door to a military compound you think is clear and right in front of the door is a dead Z as you open it. It's enough to scare quite a few players. Okay, that dude's going to come over as well. No, empty. Well, we've got an SK so we don't need another one. So there's not actually an awful lot here at the moment in VMC. I think this has been hit quite recently. But we're gonna, still going to be thorough. We're going to check everywhere. Oh, excellent. Grenade. That'll do. We've got three of them now. Oh, there we go. Alice backpack. We'll do with an upgrade. So 
So two shipping containers left for completion of this area. And then we're going to head directly outside on our way to Northwest Airfield. Take the knife. All done, and we're off. So we're currently looking at the east side of Northwest Airfield. Now, because this place is so big, you've got two options. PvP, if you want it, go get it. You'll get it everywhere. If not, it's big enough to let groups pass and hide yourself away. But that is your decision. So I always like to come in Northwest Airfield from the west side. And there are some little bits that are bugged, like these uh, 556 down there. So um, I hope they'll sort that out shortly. But in any case, I find this side, rather than the east side, a little bit more profitable for me. Now there are quite a few doors open, and there's not a lot of stuff about so far. So again, this place has already been hit before we've arrived. But that doesn't mean that you're not going to find anything decent. Because more often than not, stuff is respawning every few minutes here. Again, going to close the doors behind us. Make it look like we haven't been through. Remember the potential landmines on the floor there. Or tripwires. Left behind by uh, your fellow players. Okay, this is empty. We're going to move on. Hold on, was that a player? I thought I heard the player there. We're going to go and investigate a little bit further up. Now there were a couple of shots from coming from Viable on our way up here. But uh, so far we've not actually engaged anyone at this time. But who knows. Now you will find this quite a lot on official servers. It will be a full pop server. And you just won't find anybody in some of these locations. That is quite normal from my experience. But what you will find is all of a sudden, you'll get popped at. We'll take the M16 for the time being. It's not the ideal weapon, but uh, it's better than what we currently got. Now, as you can see, we are currently still running with our handgun silenced. Perfect for taking out the infected and without making much noise. So we're not going to attract obvious attention early on into this little run. We'll bring that affected over here. There we go. Stay in there, old son. Okay, that's him taken care of. Right, what have we got here then? Yeah, floor's clear. Some more M4 rounds. 5.56. Five, five, be careful here. Yeah, good. Took a little bit of cover from the door there as we opened. I, t I tend to do that quite a lot. Just to make sure. A lot of people, if they're camping these places, they are primed, sat in a location waiting for you to fling open that door. Well, I, uh, I like to open it from the side so that uh, any stray bullets are not going to hit me. 74 magazine. We haven't got one of those just yet. Alright, so we've wound up another infected over there. I think we'll try and lock him. The usual MO in the garage up here. Remember, these can slap you out of nowhere like that. Nowhere near, but their reach is uh, crazy at the moment. Crazy stuff. Okay, got some gloves. Slowly, slowly adding. To our full kit scenario. So we've just made our way up the western side. We're halfway around the airfield right now. I've had this backpack. We don't need that. No, we don't need that either. Now 
Now, the one thing about Northwest Airfield is there are a shed load of Zeds. Is that a Bison? That's a Bison with a silencer and 30 rounds in it. Excellent. We're going to take the uh, 40 round mag. That will fit our M16. Just clearing the path a little. Now, this is also dodgy, this building here. Right across from the comms tower in the airfield. A lot of people camp this place, so we're just being a little bit more cautious than we would normally in some of the other barracks. Always look behind. Yeah, we're good. And you can also get sniped here from across the road, from across the airfield. There are two big, big buildings, including the comms tower and the little factory tower, where snipers do love to sit on top of. And they've got a direct line of sight in here with a hunting scope. So uh, be careful of that. We picked up a load of .45 ammo here, which is great for our uh, FX-45. So because we've made quite a bit of noise now, and that Zeb being on top of that roof means that someone has been in here recently. So I think someone else is in this airfield. We saw earlier on, we had a couple of signs. I thought I heard someone when we first got in here, and now there's a Zed on top of the roof here. So there is definitely someone nearby. So we're just going to tidy up what we can, grab as much loot as we can, and hopefully get the, uh, the shot on this uh, individual before he sees us, or she sees us. Now just remember, the common etiquette for DayZ in military zones is commonly accepted that you do not, no one will think bad of you, so you do not need to communicate unless you really want to inside militaries. More often than not, 95% of people will just shoot. Won't even bother trying to initiate contact. When you get to the tents up the north end there, always check the tree line. People love to snipe in those. Okay, there's a shed load of Zeds here. We're going to have to wipe this out. Look at all this. Jesus. Uh, okay, that didn't go to plan. Right, we have made now quite a loud noise, so um, our covert approach here is no longer covert. We may get a little surprise or two in a moment. So once we've cleared the rest of the tents out here, and the shipping containers, as fast as we can, we're going to head to the very far north end of Northwest Airfield. There's another little compound just a little bit further up. And we've finally got a gun cleaning kit as well. Okay, that's the tents done. So we're three quarters of the way through Northwest. Complete. Always check the comms tower up here. That is a killer. People lying down on the top of that. And the reality is you're probably not going to see them either. Finally, we've got some pouches. Well, you know what? We're nearly there. The only thing we're kind of missing right now is night vision goggles. And we've still got Tizzy to go yet. Oh, look at that. Okay, we've got a full loadout, a full combat loadout now. Our dude does look pretty good. Add a few more grenades to the collection. We've got 74 as well. Beautiful. So look at this, check this out. You can shoot from outside into these windows. But from the reverse, sometimes they don't go through. So the basic common perception here is that if you're shooting through windows that have got bars in them, you will not be able to shoot through them. If they're clear windows like these, like quite open windows like these, then you should be able to. Anyway, that's Northwest done. Let's go have a little kit check. So we've come away with a 74, an M16. We've not done too badly. Okay, so now we're over to Tizzy, the furthest north military on the map of Chinaris. Here, you are highly likely to engage in some form of interactions. And there's a lot of good gear here. So let's take a look. So we've come in from the west side, and I like to always hit the tents before we get up 
to the northern area within Tizzy. Now this is a dangerous old place. You are likely to get taken out or at least shot at from a number of different angles and areas here. It could be in a forest. We've got two landmines now, by the way. Um, they could be from the towers. There's a couple of watchtowers here. So you need to remain extremely vigilant around this area. I would say six out of ten times I'm up here, I always get into something. So this uh, this big old watchtower here is an interesting one. So the stairs are a little bit buggy, but once you do get up and down them, you've got a great view on the tents. I mean, look at that. So I spend at least 30 seconds up here, usually, just checking this out. And this is the dodgy bit coming back down. You don't want to jump off the top, you break your leg. As you can see, this place is surrounded by Zeds also. So you've got a bit of work to do. Okay, we've taken a little beating over there. So our health is uh, three quarters only. Now these uh, plate carrying Zeds, as many of you will know, are pain in the ass. Double the strength of every other Z. Another explosive round. Beautiful. Okay, now this is a nice little one here. The little gaps on the towers you can climb into are really good for uh, shooting Zeds. Even players, actually, if they don't know you there. There you go, look. Take no damage at all. Okay, so we've moved up to the northern part of Tizzy now. And again, this is where things do start, always start to heat up. So, a couple of trends I've seen over the last year or so, especially since the latest couple of updates, you'll find a lot of players always booby trapping the entrances to all of the barracks, or some of the barracks up here. And here's the newish plate carrier. And because we're wearing the kit we're wearing, we're going to change ours over. A little bit more killing to do here. That was a crap shot. We're going to run out of bloody ammo in a minute. There it is. Yeah, I knew we'd run out. As you can see, we're getting a little bit uh, overcrowded in there. Also got to think about how much longer our uh, suppressor is going to last. I think we're damaged. Yeah, that'll be alright for a little while. Try and tidy these up quickly. At last, I think we're good. I think we're good. Question is, has anyone else heard that? Caused a little bit of a scene down here. Anyway, moving on. This is where you, this is the number one barrack where I find tripwires and uh, claymores or landmines placed down right on that door. That's another one there. Cool, cool, cool. So we could actually do that ourselves right here. I'm not going to, but uh, we could do. Okay, so we've got right to the edge of Tizzy here. We've managed to loot all of it and we haven't even been shot at right now. Which is a bit of a plus. So this may surprise you, but what we're going to do is going to go for a very quick kit check. So we've got an SK. We're running with a CR-57. We've got two other main guns here. We've got the KA-74. And we've got the M-16. We've got all this stuff on us. I think there's about eight nades. We're fully kitted in terms of our actual loadout. Alice backpack. So we are going to dump all this stuff now. As this run is over. And we're going to kill ourselves. We're going to F11. And leave this gear for anyone who does hear it. Or maybe even ventures across this. And it's the jackpot a little bit. And in the meantime. We're going to go take a look. At Toxic Zones. That's Riffy. And of course. Pavlovo. Are the two static zones on Chinaris. Okay. So we're going to start with our mask on. Up at Riffy. 
Now, a couple of things you need to know about Riffy. Above Riffy, on the cliff top, another snipe position. Load of campers generally do hang out there and see if they can snipe down into the ship and coastal area here. However, this is well worth the run because you find some great stuff here. Mainly M4s, but straight away we've got a standardized suppressor for the M4. You find M4s, KAMs, and all of the goody little bits that go with it. You'll find scopes here, ammo here. It's straight away a 40 round mag there as well. Just be careful, you need the full NBC kit. There's a KAM, we'll take that. And remember your timelines on the gas masks. So eight minutes is roughly what you're looking at. What else can we find here? Oh, was that a VSS? Yeah, VSS. Okay. I don't really like to use a VSS, but again, it's a silent sniper. So uh, some of you may like them. And there we go. Straight away, we find an M4A1. It does need a little bit of a cleanup, but we've got a 40 round mag. We've got a silencer. We've got a scope. We haven't got a scope at the moment. So there you go. There's your M4s. Head over to Riffy. Now imagine you farming this for a little while. Okay, we've hit the whole ship now. There you go. You can't beat an M4. Beautiful. So you got... We don't even need that. Okay, so that's Riffy. Top, top place to come. And this is going to form part of our new loot route in the next episode. So not too bad. They all need a bit of work, but we've got a KAM, M4, and a VSS. Plus a pox grenade. Okay, so let's go check out Pavlovo. Now, I should imagine... I haven't... Uh, compared the both of these for a little while now but I should imagine you're getting pretty much the same or similar gear from both static toxic zones oh, there's the new gloves now again as always try not to piss off all the zeds here as they will swarm you we might as well take his uh, best there give us a little bit more storage now, these Zeds on the floor have been killed because they're the normal Zeds. They've been killed by, killed by the toxic zone, by the toxic gas. That's not another player. Well, I hope it's not another player. Okay, what have we got in here? There's another 10 round mag for the M4. It's a C mag. Nothing of any real value here, but we will take the uh, KAS for the time being. Gives us our uh, automatic. Now, obviously, the same rules apply to both toxic zones. Make sure you've got a full NBC kit. And you have about eight minutes between gas filter changes. So um, a lot of the Zeds will, when they're killed, will drop a new filter. All depends what gas mask you're wearing, though. And we've caused a bit of a stir here. There's a load of Zeds coming, I think. I can hear quite a few at the... But yeah, okay, there's loads coming. Okay. Yeah. Slapping us from all angles. Okay, now these are the windows I need to test out. Because you used to be able to shoot through them. Yeah, you can't. You can't shoot through those anymore. That is a pain in the ass. that is. Okay, so we've got a little uh, body count here. Still more. One of these is going to have a decent... Yeah, there you go. I never use the uh, the slightly enhanced ones, the little tiny ones. We've got a uh, an antidote there as well, which is handy. Should we get a tear or get ill? What we got here? All right. Take gun cleaning kit. Okay, 74. We've got a bison. The old normalized suppressor. VSD, KAM, any of that would take that. What have we got? Oh, we've got a KAM. Beautiful. You've even got nails in here, look. Beautiful. Another POX grenade. 
Oh my god. As you can see, it is well worth coming in here. I'm not going to mess around too much clean that up right now, but we've got a KAS. So that's Pavlovo. Now the only thing we didn't touch on there was the uh, mass medical buildings. There's two medical buildings there, so you'll find a load of medic supplies there also. Okay, up next we're going to take a look at the heli crashes and what loot is going to spawn there now since the 121 update. 76239. Now generally, for the last couple of updates, these have dropped VSDs and LARs. They're not always here though, so you do need to get a little bit lucky. Oh, we've got an LAR. Oh, shit. Alright, we've got an LAR straight away. Beautiful. And we've got night vision. Yo. Okay, good. So there you go. That heli site has been quite productive. Alright, let's move on to the next one. Okay, so we've gone to the other side of the map now. This is right out west. A different type of heli crash. So I'm hoping for a different type of loot here. Are we going to get a big boy gun? Or is it going to be crap? Now these are few and far between. Some are really good. Some are very poor at times. Getting a lot of those 76239s though. Got KM. Oh my god, there you go. We've got a VSD. <laughs> it's worn, I think, or damaged, one of the two, but we've got a VSD. So out of four heli sites we've hit today, we've got one LAR and one VSD, plus one night vision goggles. So uh, we've done pretty well. What's in here? There's a VSD mag. Beautiful. We don't want the bison, not with them big boys we got. And we've got some 76254. Perfect ammo for the VSD. So we have now moved on over to take a look at the dynamic events. And in this case, I've got three military trains I'm going to show you. This one's in the dark on the coast, out west. And we're just going to see what we can pick out here. So not a lot so far. We are a freshie. Oh. Got some uh, 5.56 five, there. A couple of bullets. At the moment, I don't even think we've actually got a main weapon. Alright, let's get in these containers. We're probably going to end up setting up all these infected in a minute. We'll get surrounded again. Okay, grenade. We don't want that. Oh, claymore. There you go. There you go, people. There's the claymores. Is that a 101? So there you go. If you get the train, the dynamic train spawn on the coast, the military train spawn, then you can pick up, like I just have, a 101 right on the coast. Now, this is the... Own, this and Belota are the only two spots on the coast that these military trains do spawn in. So make sure you check those two areas out. Take the vest. A bit more storage now. What else we've got here? No, don't want smoke grenades, cobra sights. No. Right, we've got a little bit of work to do here. Slap some of these Zeds up. Okay, we're good. Moving on. What else have you got for us? No, no, no. I think that's it. Yeah, that's it. Okay. That's not too bad. That's not too bad. Okay, this time, daytime, we're at Ross Tookie, which is just south of Copa Castle. And we've got another military dynamic spawn here. Now, I think there's a player here, or there's a player very nearby, so we need to be really careful. Got an ATOG explosive grenade. What else we got here? I'm sure I've heard footsteps on the rocks below me, so um, we need to be quick here. And what's this? A bison? Oh, USG. Okay. So we are running through this nice and quickly. 
We're probably going to get shot in a second. There's a bison. That'll do. 30 rounds. Okay, good. We're loaded. Mm, I can't see this dude. Is he underneath the bridge? There was definitely foot footsteps just underneath there a minute ago. You never know, they may not have actually heard me. Well, now we're locked and loaded. I'm ready to go. Who knows, maybe it's a friendly dude. They haven't said hello. Oh, I'm lagging a little bit as well. Yeah, there's something not right here. We are definitely, definitely near another player here. We better take that. There's another 12 rounds in that. I've got a funny feeling we're about to get ambushed here. What else we got? Is that a KAM mag? It is. Yeah, we don't need that. I can't see this dude anywhere. I can't hear any footsteps now either. I think he's hiding underneath that bridge. Mm, nothing here. Alright. He's not that side. Let's go check under the bridge. Well, it's dark, dusk, and we've returned to the Rostuki Bridge just to see if there is any new gear, as this is a new spawn again. Now, that guy that I thought was under the bridge, we couldn't find him. So, uh, whoever that was has clearly left. What have we got here now? So, we haven't had a lot of luck. We're looking for an M79, which do spawn in these. So that's the weapon that will fire, for those who don't know, the explosive grenades. Is that a new plate carrier? It is. It is. Excellent. We can now plate it up. Beautiful. There's loads of these explosive grenades on these trains. What's that, three so far? Three, four? Yeah, just making sure. I've just switched over my vest and it's gone. Normally, it'll be, there you go, in the side of something or underneath. So uh, be careful of this little bug here. And look what I had in it. Bloody claymore. Hacksaw. I would have lost that if I didn't notice. Right, what we got then? What we got here? No, I don't need that. Another bison. We definitely don't need that. Okay, in the carriages then. Be careful because someone that may well be just sat there waiting for you to open the door. But luckily for us, not on this occasion. Okay, so we've reached the end of episode one. And we've got a lot more to cover in the next few episodes, including the Livonia version of this. So we've got quite a bit to get through. I hope you found this helpful. And if you have, please don't forget to subscribe. And I'll see you next time. Take care.